Okay, this is part two, so we're going to explain why prime lenses are better than zoom lenses, all things being equal. We're talking about superior quality production and superior lenses. Why are they? Why is it specifically relevant to element count and not specifically relevant to a variable focal length as found in a zoom or super zoom or, a, or an ultra zoom, like a 28 to 300, which is actually a decent lens. It's sharp, but obviously produces flat images and you actually have pin cushioning on either end of the lens. Let's first look at the most important word in the entire universe, which modern science has never explained, will never explain. Well, it might in the future. I mean, I know the explanation for it. Field. Most important word in the entire universe that you'll never find an explanation for. Freaking impossible to explain logically with descriptions. <laughs> That's what I've kind of denoted. If you actually look up for a description of... Uh, uh, excuse me, an explanation of what a field is, you'll never find it. It doesn't exist within any branch of science. You'll find elaborate descriptions, you'll find uh, parameters of, uh, of uh, quantification as large to perturbations and influences and chains of causation, but since fields are particle free, no particles are involved in fields, okay, just like uh, Complete wireless induction across the vacuum. It's like, how am I transmitting power from one place to the other? Which you can do that with a, uh, a roll of, uh, of copper wire and another roll of coil copper wire hooked to a light bulb. You stick both of them inside a giant vacuum chamber. I mean, you could turn the light bulb on over here. There's no particles there. So what is a field? We're talking about light here, directly so pertains to photography. Let's get down to the nitty gritty of what we're talking about. Now why are primes better? You're never going to find an explanation online. They don't exist. The best that you'll find is that it'll state that, well, there are fewer uh, glass elements in a uh, prime lens or in a zoom lens. Well, that's a description. That's not an explanation. So what is it that gives dimensionality the renditional depth to a prime lens that all you thousands of people, I made a video stating about why, the, there are many examples like this, but why the 135mm is so awesome, or why the 50mm prime is so awesome, um, and some other lenses, people have had zooms, you bought a kit lens for your Nikon zoom, and it's like, oh great, I'm taking decent pictures. And then you buy a nice prime lens, either this one or another one, and then you contact me by going, Holy crap, my pictures are so much better. What is it? I don't get it. It's just as sharp, but there's something there I can't put my finger on. The color saturation is better. It looks more realistic. It looks like it has more depth. Look like it has a hologram. Hologram. This is a two-dimensional object. Where is the depth coming from on this hologram? Where is it coming from? This is a flat two-dimensional image. Where is the depth coming from? Same premise. Parallax. Magnetic permeability. Binocular disparity. Diffraction. Electromagnetic retardation. Relevant to coherency. ED glass dielectric permittivity. All of these um, uh, elements that have to be added to zooms which do not exist in primes, or most primes, especially the older ones, like achromatic doublets. Here you have a primary and here you have a secondary. It's an achromatic doublet. The achromatic doublet, the secondary, is a flint element. And what, is the, what it is doing, it is causing convergence of the, of the red spectrum and the blue spectrum to focus in at one point. Without this uh, secondary flint element, the convergence points would be drastically different. Here we're talking about chromatic aberration. So. Especially when we're talking about the creation of zooms, we're talking about adding glass. And usually is a lot of damn glass. Okay? Glass is evil. Okay? What is ED glass? How is Nikon compensated for this? Well, they've vastly improved glass, they've improved its purity, they've improved the silica, the silica blanks, they've also created ED glass, they've created nanoparticle coating glass. But nanoparticle coating is just about maximum light transmission. Now, ED glass, uh, extra low dispersion glass, where it's actually converted, regular glass versus ED glass. Now, the downside to ED glass is that it has low magnetic permeability, and obviously everything in light has an electric, uh, electrical component, a transverse electrical component, and a transverse magnetic component. That's inescapable. But what ED glass has, and this is an icon, a secret that Nikon and Canon and everybody else keeps secret, is what is the composition of this ED glass, especially used in zoom, in, uh, zoom lenses, not typically used in prime lenses, is titanium dioxide, which is a photocatalytic uh, uh, compound, which has a high dielectric permittivity. What does high dielectric permittivity mean? It means this blue 
uh, blue, uh, blue light, or the blue end of the spectrum versus the red end of the spectrum, normal, normal regular glass, the blue is retarded, this is electromagnetic retardation. This is a very simplex principle. But it's actually extremely complex. Here, here, here's a gigantic book on electromagnetic retardation if you want to read it. It has to do with the fact that this glass is doped with, just kind of like a person is doped, you know, they're on dope, they're full of, the glass is doped with a secret recipe that Nikon and Canon and everybody else does. It's either lanthanum oxide, which increases dielectric permittivity, I, I, which makes it an ED glass. These additive changes in the glass change the natural capacitance of high energy light. It means it basically is like greasing up the glass to let higher energy blue light slip through faster, which means that the convergence points of the blue, red, the blue light and the red light converge at the same point or very nearly the same point versus regular glass where you have major disparity in convergence without using an achromatic doublet, which I showed you about in video number one. The other secret ingredients that uh, Nikon and uh, Canon use, they won't tell you the density or the properties. They use lanthanum oxide, which also increases dielectric permittivity. This is zirconium dioxide or calcium fluoride. Specifically, uh, most of it is titanium dioxide, which is a photocatalytic uh, property which allows for extremely high dielectric permittivity. It's basically like saying, I'm going to dope this glass so that the blue light slides through it faster. Because glass is a dielectric capacitor. Every one of these little dots in the red and the blue light here, okay, let's just take a rough look at red light and blue light. Per same amount of exposure we have higher capacitance this is the end of the spectrum that will kill your ass okay obviously blue further on okay higher power higher capacitance in electrovolts okay right into the spectrum less power okay why do you think the uh, the, the 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 blue light is dispersed more through regular glass than it is through red light electromagnetic retardation there are other variables. I mean, I can make a dozen videos on this, but nobody's going to want to watch it. But these other variables, if you want to look it up, are parallax, binocular disparity, diffraction, obviously, electromagnetic retardation, as specifically pertains to coherency, and ED, uh, ED glass dielectric permittivity. But the downside to high dielectric permittivity in ED glass is that it has low magnetic permeability. So, okay, great. We're able to incorporate these into zoom lenses, but it has low magnetic permeability. Oh, wait, light is electromagnetic, which means it has low magnetic permeability. Even though it has high dielectric permittivity, it means that it screws the light. Another prime reason why uh, prime lenses are better than zoom lenses, okay? You're never going to find an explanation on this anywhere on the internet. Nowhere are you going to find this. And there are also no lens designers that know anything about field theory. They know everything there is to know about indexes of refraction regarding glass and various compounds that they test, and they've got a secret formula, Nikon, and everybody does for their own ED glass. But none of these people that design lenses, none of them know jack crap about field theory, okay? There is another parameter of lens properties that induce, whether it's film or your digital sensor, which induce another property into a photograph that has nothing to do with sharpness, and it has sometimes to do with perceived sharpness due to chromatic aberration. Obviously, less chromatic aberration means better perceived sharpness, but as a relevant of actual sharpness, that means that the prime lenses are superior. People look at it and they go, this is the same, this is 80 millimeters, say this is an 80 millimeter lens, which is not, this 80 millimeter lens uh, is the exact same sharpness as this huge prime over here with 23 elements at 80 millimeters. Both the shots are taken at 80 millimeters. Why does this one look so much better? Why do the color saturations look better? Why does the image have more depth? Why does the 2D image have more depth? Has its, now, if you wanted me to go into a four-part video series on, uh, on a laser uh, coherency uh, or frequency drift and the production of extreme depth on lasers, I certainly could, but I'd probably bore the piss out of you. If you want to do a search on laser depth holography, you can do that. This is a two-dimensional image, too. Okay? There is nothing here that's 3D. So where the hell is all this depth coming from? It's coming from the same place... It's coming from in a prime lens versus a zoom lens. Binocular disparity and magnetic permeability. One of the thing, main things that makes up 
uh, the uh, the beautiful art holograms, which are just stunning. I mean, they're mind blowing, stunning. Is the coherency of the length of the laser determines the depth of field, which can be recorded in the scene. Now, there's two different types of depth of field. There's the depth of field that's actually recorded, i.e., the f-stop relevant to the depth of field that is captured in focus. But there's another depth of field that has to do with prime lenses versus zoom lenses, and that is the renditional depth of what is captured, the, the hamburgering of the light, which has to do with binocular disparity, and the use of uh, zoom lenses versus prime lenses, and use of ED glass, and every glass is a dielectric capacitor. ED glass is nothing other than secret sauce glass, which is doped with titanium dioxide or zirconium dioxide or lanthanum oxide. These are photocatalytic photo greasers, if you will, to allow uh, focal conversion between the red end of the spectrum and the blue end of the spectrum. Okay, reduces chromatic aberration. Nikon doesn't really, they still do some, but they don't produce uh, lenses like this anymore. This uh, Nikkor 135mm 3.5 or the 2.8 has a little bit of chromatic aberration. But this lens has only got four elements in it. Every one of you that's bought one of these lenses, they report about, oh, I've been shooting for 20 years and I've shot zoom lenses and oh my god, I've got a 135mm 2.8 or i got a 50mm uh, f1.8. I've only ever shot the kit lens that came with mine, and this, the, 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 the idiot at the camera store told me he'd buy another zoom lens, and I bought another zoom lens, and you know, I bought this cheap old lens, and all of a sudden my pictures look so much better, they look so much more real, realistic, they've got depth, they've got better color saturation. What is it? Okay, I can say, like some other website, why is a prime lens better than a zoom lens? And they'll say, well, it's got fewer elements in it. Well, that's a description, that's not an explanation! I can't stand descriptions. I can get descriptions out of a child. Descriptions are for children. You want to look at something that's really simple, this is directly applicable analogously to a lens. This is a ferro cell, the back of this is just paper. It's two pieces of optically flat glass, ringing it here, covered in tape, is LED light shooting inwards, okay? So it's just a string of LED light shooting inwards. These are two pieces of flat glass with a tiny smear of ferro fluid between it. LED light is shooting in there. What happens if I turn off the light? You're never going to see it in, my, in this camera. You're never going to see it. You're going to see part of it. But if you actually had one of these in your hand, you'd see almost four inches of depth. Now, here is the amazing crap. Now, this is the crap that will blow your damn mind. And this is directly applicable to lenses. If you had this in your hands right now, it's one of the most simple inventions in the world. It's two pieces of glass with a smear of ferrofluid between it. That ferrofluid is less than a micron thin. But if you were to hold this in your hand, you can see part of it in the camera, in, the, uh, in, the, in the, what I'm recording right now. You see about four inches of depth. You're seeing four inches of depth from less than a micron thin smear of ferrofluid. This thing is nothing other than two optically flat, you can't use sheet glass like you get at the hardware, two optically flat sheet pieces of glass with a ring of LEDs around it shooting inwards. And this magnet underneath is causing electromagnetic retardation in a layer of ferrofluid that is less than one micron thin. I have four inches of depth. Okay? You can see it here. I have four inches of depth. Okay? Visual depth. You can't see it so much. I can. If you had one of these in your hands, you have four inches of depth out of something that is less than one micron thin. And that is due to electromagnetic retardation. It has to do with binocular disparity and parallax, the coherency of the light as it is shifted. Okay? The same thing that makes up this magnet, dielectric and magnetic fields, is the same thing that makes up light. The same thing. It's like, how are you going to compare a magnet to a lens? Uh, well, I'll tell you how. Uh, because light is dielectric and electrical and magnetic. And the crap that passes through this thing is dielectric, electrical, and magnetic. Yes, folks, I can make the analogy. Magnet, lens, magnet, lens. Same analogy applies. Absolutely, undeniably, unequivocally, period. Flat out, no argument. None. Let's see if we can make a third little video really quick. If you don't like the third video, just pass on over it, okay? Some people are actually interested in this stuff. Why? Because nobody else is talking about it.